A very common scenario that you'll perform with Data Factory is appending files, whether that's simple appending or concatenating files together or being a little bit smarter and merging files based on keys. All possible in Data Factory, and I'm going to demonstrate in this video how to do that using the mapping data flow feature within Data Factory. So let's start here with a very, very simple pipeline that just has a sim one single activity, and that is a data flow activity. Let's go into that data flow to take a look at what's being done here. So in my example, I have three different CSV files all sitting in the lake. And for my lake storage, I'm using Azure Blob Store. And these are very simple CSVs. Uh, my, uh, hopefully this, this can sort of demonstrate to you the way that you would construct such a um, such a, a data flow in a pipeline. And then you can use this for your much larger uh, data sets. But let's stick with what the concepts are here and how you would achieve this. So the first data set is a sales CSV. And so I have a data set called sales one. And that is the set of original sales for the day. And then sales new is a new uh, sale or sales that occur that I just want to append to the original sales. And that is called sales three. And then this data set is called, um, sorry, this data set is called sales update. And this is an update to an existing row within that file where I'm changing and I'm updating the price. Let's take a look at that data over here on my um, Explorer so that you can have a look at what this data, the sample data is going to look like. So the first original sales, not that one, it's this one, sales two, with a couple of rows. I only have, let's see, I have a couple of rows and I have just a few columns, keeping this very simple. So the columns are ID, title, and cost. And these are, you know, sort of think of these as maybe books. Um, I just kind of made this data up. And so you have a SKU or an ID, a title, and then a cost. All right, so one, two, three, four rows to start with. Then we have this additional sale that occurred. This is one new row, so this would just be appended. And this one is right there. So there you go, tail two cities with a price of $10. And then this was the final data set, which is going to be an update to one of the original books, which is the Joy of Cooking, and the price increased from $5 to $7. So we can do this all within Dataflow. Now, let's start with the original sales data. And, and that CSV, then what we do is we're going to union. We're going to use union to concat the or append the new sales, uh, which is right here. So you see I have a union. And on that union, I say left side is the original sales, and then the right side is the new sales. And when you put those things together, uh, you end up with one, two, three, four, five rows. So the tail of two cities was that new book that I showed you, and then these were the originals. So now we have those concatted together. Now I have some uh, some extraneous space in my files, which is very common that you'll see in uh, text files. And so after all my unions, I'm going to filter those out with a not null, which is simply an expression that says not is null based on that title being null. And then that'll clear out those, those nulls. But the second union I'm doing is, uh, again, just a straight union taking what um, is now the original plus the new, and I'm adding the updates. So the update, uh, let me refresh this so we can get that data. And when we do that, we then see the um, additional updated price of drive cooking added. And of course, we still have the original because we're just appending. We're just concatting these together, the original $5. <clears throat> now, this may be what you wanted. Perhaps this is all you wanted to do. And that's fine. It's very easy. And your data flow is done there. But I'm taking it a step further to um, say that this latest would be the one that I want to keep, the last in, which is the updated price. Something changed. So I want to keep that and not the original. Um, a1234 ID. Let's call it Joy of Cooking. So first thing I'm going to do is I, I don't like those nulls there, so I'm going to clean things up a little bit. I'm going to take the nulls out with that not is null for title, and this will remove the nulls and just have clean data. Alrighty, beautiful. It looks great. <laughs> now, what I'm going to do to, um, here's the method I'm going to use to essentially dedupe this and to, and to keep the last in. I'm going to create a surrogate key so that each one of these has a unique ID because these are not unique because this is an update to an existing row. I'm going to use the surrogate key transform to do that. Surrogate key transform is very simple. Just, just give it a starting point and then always increments for every row. So every row is going to now get a unique ID. Let me just quick show you what that looks like so you can get an idea of uh, what that's going to look like. And so there's the, um, the ID from the original data, and then here is the surrogate key one, two, three, four, five, six, one for each row. Now let's not worry about the branch. I'm going to talk about this branching in a second. This is essentially um, cast. This is taking the original set of data and just duplicating it. 
But what I'm going to do is let's follow along on the, on the top. So now I'm creating this distinct. This is a way that I can group those together so that I only get one copy of each. The ID is the uh, value that is unique but is uh, to each book, but is duplicated in there because this is actually a listing of the sales of that book. So ID is my group by, so essentially I'm going to use group by to create distinct values. For, for an aggregate, I'm going to say that I want the last, the last occurrence of um, essentially my key, which was my surrogate key, I called my surrogate key my key. The last one of those is the one I want, and I'm calling it winner, so I know which one's the winner. So if I go back to my surrogate key, you'll see that my key is right here, and there will be two that will be grouped together for A1234. The last, number six, is the one I want. If maybe I wanted the first price, the first cost, $5, then I would say first, but I'm going to say last, so I get the last one. All right, so maybe it helps to see it to clarify what I'm talking about. What you'll see is one value for each because it's grouped by the my key, which is a unique surrogate key. I'll take that back. <laughs> it's grouped by the ID, which is the unique name of each book, but this is sales of those books, so you'll have duplicates, and you got to tell the system which one do you want. And I'm going to say I want the last because that is the last updated price. All right, and there they are. So notice there is no one in this list because one was also A1234 and I wanted the last, not the first, all right? So what that's gonna represent now is that's gonna represent the new price of uh, drive cooking. However, what happens with a aggregate transform, which is what I used for my group by to get distinct values here. What happens when you do that is the metadata, the column propagation stops. I will only get my uh, group by and my aggregate columns out. And that's not good enough. I need the entire set of data so I can land that back into the lake. That's why I created and I did a new branch off of here. By saying new branch, I can duplicate that data with all the original data, and I just use a select to rename that stream as original data. Now I get my original columns back, and I can join those. So I say rejoin data, which is going to be on that. I'm going to use the surrogate key to rejoin because that is unique for every row. So I know I'll get the latest price, the latest cost of that book. So the winner key equals my key. And then I'm going to sync that back to a new CSV file. In my sync, I will just create a folder. And in that folder, I can say to it that I want to call it salesupdated.csv. So notice I'm setting the clear the folder um, uh, checkbox so that we can clear out anything that's ready in that folder. We will get one file output and it will be called salesupdated.csv. My mapping has to be custom mapping, no auto mapping, because I don't want to land the um, surrogate key. That's just for internal purposes. I don't want to land any of the other, um, you know, the, the grouping column or the aggregate column. I don't want a winner in there. I'm just using the columns that came in from the original set of data. So it's going to look just like the original data, but with only the new sales and the updated cost of the book. Let's go on that join and let's take a look at the um, preview data just to make sure that we're getting what we want. So when we do this preview, when you're in debug mode, no data is ever um, serialized. It is not um, output to the file. We're going to run this, execute this from a pipeline to write the file. Let's, let's just use this just to validate our logic. And when our uh, preview comes back, we see that that's exactly what we have. There we have the uh, six unique keys. There are the IDs of the books. These are the sales, and the cost of drug cooking is now $7. So now let's actually execute this within a pipeline so we get that file written. So we go out back to that sales pipeline I started with, and we're in debug is on, so I can click the debug pipeline button. All right, and what that's gonna do is that's gonna actually execute that data flow. Now that data flow, remember I had on the data flow, I had on the sync, I said, clear the folder, and then write the single file. So the, um, the folder will get cleared out, and then it's going to write that file. So let's go to that folder, and let's take a look at what's going on. Well, it's running. That'll take a minute to run. So I can go over to my Explorer, and let's go up to the output data. And we'll go to the folder. I'm using the folder. My folder is called Parts. So I'll go through some of my... Uh, junk stuff I have here, a lot of stuff. I do way too much testing. And under parts, we should see, let me close this viewer. So the folder has been cleared, 
All right, so we know that it is up to that part of the um, pipeline or, or the data flow at this point. So now if we refresh, what we're going to see is some of the temporary files being written by Spark because it executes as uh, within Azure Databricks. Um, and then uh, we will see a single file gets created then of just the updated um, rows that we saw in the sync. And there we go. There is the file. Let's look at it. And this should look just like the data uh, preview that we had from Dataflow, and there it is. So we now have a file that has new rows, new sales, and updated sales merged together in a single file. Didn't use the database at all. Okay, thanks for watching.